I'm going to ask a question that has intrigued astronomers and philosophers since antiquity. Aristotle even had an answer to this question, so we're talking about a period from ancient Greece. This question was posed by Heinrich Wilhelm Matthäus Olbers in 1826, which generated a paradox that often today bears his name. But others had asked this question before, such as Johannes Kepler in 1610. Olbers asked, If the universe is infinite and eternal, filled with countless stars, why is the night sky not completely illuminated? This is the dark sky paradox, or Olbers paradox. If you think about it, this question makes sense, but it has some flaws that are completely justifiable if you know the era in which it was made. It was only in the 20th century that there was a transformation in cosmology, and we stopped believing that the universe was infinite and eternal. And it was precisely because we believed this before that we couldn't find an answer to this question. Aristotle claimed that the sky had few stars, and where there are no stars, it is dark. And the problem was resolved until the 15th century, where other explanations of the universe began to emerge. At that time, in 1416, it was believed that the universe was infinite. And only more than 100 years later, Thomas Diggs realized that explaining the dark sky in an infinite universe was complicated. If the universe is infinite, housing an unlimited number of stars, at any point in the sky where one looks, there would be a star. Thus, the firmament would be completely covered by stars, without empty spaces or dark areas, if we consider the infinity of the universe. And infinity is vast. And even if not all the light from distant stars reached us, an infinite number of stars would compensate for that. Moreover, in an infinite and eternal universe, the light from the stars would have eternity to reach our eyes, challenging the knowledge of that time. Nobody had an answer to the dark night paradox. You might be thinking now that an obvious answer to this would be to abandon the concept of the universe being infinite and having an infinite number of stars. After all, this would explain everything, but not at that time. According to the physical theory proposing an infinite universe, if the universe were finite, it would succumb to the effect of its own gravity. All matter would aggregate into a single point, resulting in the end of the universe as we know it. So, we had another problem. A finite universe would collapse, but an infinite universe wouldn't explain why the night is dark. And besides, we have another problem. You still haven't subscribed to the Cosmic Quest newsletter. Seriously, I'm keeping an eye out. You can receive news, curiosities, and cosmic events at the frequency of the moon's phases directly in your email inbox. If you're passionate about the universe, I wouldn't miss out on this. The first bonus for early subscribers has already ended, but you still have a chance to get on the premium list. The link is in the pinned comments. Now, many theories have emerged attempting to clarify this issue, including the one proposed by Heinrich Olbers. He argued that the light from distant stars was obstructed by cosmic dust along the way, and only the light from stars not intercepted by this dust could reach us. However, the dust that supposedly blocks the light from the stars would end up absorbing this same light, heating up as a result. In the face of light from infinite stars, this dust would heat up to temperatures similar to the stars themselves, causing it to glow just like a star, which contradicts the initial premise. Thus, even though it initially seemed like a plausible solution, the proposal that cosmic dust blocks the light from stars and explains the dark areas of the sky turns out to be unfeasible. If it were true, the dust, upon heating up to stellar temperatures, would also light up the night sky, leaving us without an explanation for the darkness observed between the stars. It was only in the 20th century that astronomy and physics underwent a revolutionary era, bringing new understandings to the ancient enigma of the universe. It was concluded that the universe is finite and has a finite number of stars, leaving no more way to explain the paradox. The one who finally settled this matter was the poet Edgar Allan Poe, whom you might know perhaps. Here we are in an era where physics was much more advanced, and it was known that a finite universe did not need to gravitationally collapse a great example of this is galaxies. But even with this defined, the sky would still not be dark if the universe were eternal. The Big Bang Theory emerged as an explanation for the origin of the universe. It suggests that the universe began as an extremely dense and hot point, expanding and cooling over time. This expansion not only distances the stars from each other, but also implies that the light from many is still on its way, leaving vast regions of the universe beyond our observational reach. 
Einstein's theory of relativity, with its revelations about space-time, also paved the way for a deeper understanding of the structure and dynamics of the universe. The key to solving the paradox came with the observation of the universe's expansion, a discovery made by Edwin Hubble. He noticed that galaxies are moving away from each other, indicating that the universe is far from static, being in a state of continuous expansion. This expansion suggests that light from stars situated at great distances takes longer to reach us, and there are those whose light may never reach us. This question was truly fascinating. It took nearly five centuries to have an acceptable answer to it, and the fact that the universe started with the Big Bang and is expanding is precisely the answer. The universe is very young, and the stars do not have infinite time, nor are they static for all their light to reach our eyes. 